Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Just wanted to share the script that I found while working with terrains. What the script is going to do, it's going to generate terrain automatically once you spawn into the game. And then as the player moves around the world, it's going to generate new terrain for the player. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So right now I have no terrain. Once I join into the game, we'll see what happens. Okay, and as you can see, we have terrain that's generated automatically. And as the player moves around the map, new terrain will get generated. So you can see the background here. As I move closer to the back, new terrain is being added. All right, so I just thought this was a cool little script. I didn't make it myself. This is found on the Roblox developer website, but I just thought I'd share it with you and explain how it works. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna be typing out the script. It's gonna be already in the script that we're gonna take a look at. I'm gonna have the contents of this script linked in the description so that you can just copy and paste. I don't think it's worth typing it out yourself because there's a lot of areas where you can make a mistake. So what I would recommend is just following along with the explanation in this video and then copy and pasting it into a script. All right, so we're gonna be adding the script inside a server script service. So just go and click on the plus sign and then click on script. So this here is the script that I'm gonna have linked in the description. This is found also on the Roblox developer website. I just added some more comments to it to help explain what's going on. So at the very top here, we're just getting the player service by saying game colon get service and players. This section right here in between the two dashed lines, these are your constants that are used throughout the script. If you wanna see where they're used in the script, you can click on the constant and then it's gonna highlight every usage of it down in the script here. So this first constant right here is going to control the height of the terrain. So if you want lower terrain, you're gonna make this a smaller number. If you want higher terrain, then make it a bigger number. This second constant is the grid scale for terrain generation, but I really wouldn't worry about changing this value right here. The third option is the render distance, so this is definitely one that I would consider adjusting. This is gonna control how much terrain is generated. So if you have a higher number here, more terrain is gonna be generated around the player, but that also might mean there's more lag in the game. So just test out some values and see what works best for you. The next two are also values that you can probably just leave as is. The next option is the generation seed. Once again, don't mess with this one. The terrain type is one that you can change. So this is gonna control what type of terrain you're generating. So right now it's gonna be grass, but I'll show you some examples later on where we generate different terrain, maybe rocks or sand. The code you see below the dashed lines controls the terrain generation. As you can see, it's kind of complex and I'm not gonna explain it top to bottom. I'm gonna pick out certain parts and then show you how it works. Okay, so the first part I'm going to start with is the main loop down here. And what this is gonna do, it's going to get the player's position every one second. So you can see here, it's going to take the humanoid root part and take its position. And it's gonna be taking the player's position and sending it to this function right here. And once again, you can click on the function name and it's gonna show you where it's at in the script. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that function and see what it's doing. So the main purpose of this function is to check the player's surroundings to see if they're in a new location or a place they've already been to. This section right here is generating an area around the player. It's using the X and the Z value, so that's gonna be left to right and then forward and backwards. So that's gonna create a square around the player. And what it's gonna do with that location area, it's going to check to see if it already exists in our table. So right up here, this table is keeping track of all the chunk locations. So this is all the places the player has gone. So right here, what it's checking for is if the player is in a new location, so it's not in our table, then it's gonna go ahead and send that location to this function right here and it's gonna do something in that function. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's happening in this function right here. So this function right here is preparing values for the terrain generation. So it's taking in the X and the Z value that was generated over here. So this section right here, it's doing some math and scaling these values to get ready for the terrain generation function, which is located right up here. So it's going to pass those values, the CX, the CY, and the CZ, along with the terrain type, and that is defined right up here and it's sending all those values to this function right up here. So the CX is going to turn into the, just the X value here. CY they're renaming to height Y. The CZ is turning into the Z, and the terrain type is now called material. Once again, this section right here is just doing some math and some scaling for the values. The important part of this function is the terrain fill block. So this takes a C frame, which is gonna be the orientation of the new terrain. It's gonna take the size, which is how big it's gonna be, and also the material. Okay, and just as a quick recap, these values up here are the constants that are used throughout the script. This function right here is getting the player's location every one second. This next function right here is checking the surroundings to see if the player has already been there. 
If the player hasn't been there, it's going to add its location into the table. Also, if the player is in a new location, it's going to prepare values for the terrain generation, and it's going to send those values to this function right here, which is actually what makes the terrain using this line of code right here. All right, so like I mentioned before, don't worry about typing this out because there's a lot of places you can make a mistake, and all it takes is one wrong capital or a misplaced period or a comma or something like that, and the whole thing's not going to work. So what I would recommend is just using the link in the description to copy and paste this, and then adjusting your values up here. This is the only section of the code right here that you'll need to make any changes to. The rest of it you're just going to leave as is. All right, so we already saw what grass looks like, so let's choose a different terrain type. So let's try rock right here. Once we see what that looks like, we'll try adjusting some of the other numbers here. All right, and we can see instead of the grass terrain, we now have rocks. Let's go ahead and go back to the script and adjust some other numbers. So what I'm going to do this time is we're going to choose a different terrain. So let's try sand this time. For the base height, I'm going to make it super tall, so let's try 100. And then I'm going to turn down the render distance a little bit, so let's try 50. So this means it's not going to generate as much terrain around the player, but that also means there might be less lag in the game. All right, let's go ahead and try it out. All right, there we go. So you can see my terrain is much higher. You can also see it doesn't generate as much terrain, so I can look ahead and I don't see any terrain. But as the player gets closer, then it generates as the player moves around the game. To see what the different options are for the terrain type, after material, if you click on the period, it's going to show all the different terrain types. So let's choose one more before we end with this video. Let's go ahead and try ice. And I said you probably don't need to adjust these numbers, but let's go ahead and do it just for fun. So instead of that, let's just go ahead and choose 90 for each. All right, let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right, and as you can see, it looks like adjusting those two numbers in the middle, uh, it made the terrain not as jagged, but more flat and rounded. So that might be something you want to consider changing. All right, so I think I'm going to end it with this video. I thought this was a really cool script, so I just wanted to share it with you guys. If you have any questions about what the script is doing, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed.